Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today's phrase is to shed light on something and it's commonly used to describe making something less confusing or providing clarification about a topic or situation or a problem. It's very common. Let me give you some examples so you can hear it. The newly discovered letters shed light on the daily lives of people living in the 19th century. Another one might be, mm, the recent study sheds light on how climate change is affecting birds. Detectives hope that the witness will shed light on exactly what happened at the scene of the crime. Uh, the documentary sheds light on the way we lived in the past. The Economist's report sheds light on how the global pandemic has impacted people's lives. So you can hear there that to shed light on something is really to reveal or clarify information. It's like when you get up in the morning and you go to the window, you open the curtains and the light comes in and you can see outside. Although where I'm living at this moment in time, <laughs> it's still very, very dark. But basically, when you open the curtains in the morning, or in American English, when you open the drapes, then basically you can see what's happening outside and you have a clear view of what's going on and what's been happening. So to shed light on something is when it becomes a lot clearer, when the situation's a lot clearer. So a teacher's job is to shed light on what a particular word or phrase means. So if you have any problems, you can talk about shedding light on those problems. And the good thing about it is you can use it in any tense you want. It's the same in the past tense, identical. Um, we shed light on that yesterday. So it's irregular. It's always shed. Uh, we hope that some light will be shed tomorrow uh, on this particular situation. You need to be a little bit careful with using the word shed when you use it alone in English because it doesn't actually mean to reveal. It kind of means to move. For example, I want to shed some weight which means to get rid of some weight from my body. My cat, my little cat, he sheds his hair in the summer because he has a big heavy coat and he has to shed that. And animals generally, they shed their hair, their fur, or birds shed their feathers. So you need to be kind of careful if you're using the word shed. It's one of these weird words which has many meanings. And then, of course, there's also the little shed which sits at the bottom of your garden where you keep all your garden tools. A garden hut in British English is called a shed, and we all have them sitting in our garden. I don't. I don't uh, have anything in my garden, but, uh, yeah, sheds are very common. Now today, in the news, there's a story about the English poet William Blake. And for those of you who don't know, he's a very famous poet from history. 
he wasn't only a poet, he was kind of like a mystical figure, and his poetry was rather dark, but some people consider it to be revolutionary. He was also an artist, and from time to time his art pops up, and people here enjoy that. And there's a new exhibition opening in Cambridge. Cambridge, as you know, is a place which has a very famous university, Cambridge University, and this exhibition on William Blake sheds new light on the artist, and that's what the headline says. It says, Cambridge Exhibition on William Blake sheds new light about the artist. And uh, the story goes on to talk about, however, uh, it's a little bit hard to understand because, of course, he is a poet and, you know, poets and creative people were all a little bit strange. <laughs> but it does have his art here, which is very dark. Oh, the mood of his uh, paintings uh, is a little bit dark. But it says that it hopes that new light will be shed about him and his life as this art exhibition goes on display. It says it's going to be the largest art exhibition ever using uh, his paintings and I think a few others uh, from other people as well. Uh, they gave a statement, they said, we are excited to be able to shed new light on William Blake by placing his works in dialogue with wider trends and themes in European art, including transformations of the classical tradition, fascination with mysticism, um, and it goes on to talk about how it will feature 180 paintings, drawings, and prints. Um, oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, some of these paintings are beautiful. I went to a William Blake exhibition years ago in the Tate Gallery in London. Uh, that was lovely. His pictures here are really nice. Some of them are a little bit kitsch, <laughs> because, of course... Uh, Britain isn't really famous for art. Name a famous British artist, aside from maybe William Blake and a few others. I can't really think of any. They all went to Europe to learn how to paint. Yeah, Britain, it, it doesn't come naturally for us, I think, uh, to paint. Although we do have some nice artists. Well, this guy, William Blake, um, he lived from 1757 to 1827. I seem to remember that he's buried in South, is it South War Cathedral or South Art Cathedral in London? Um, and he produced a huge body of work uh, during his time. He was really fascinated with mysticism. So his, his paintings are all a little bit mysterious. Um, yeah, it's very, very good. And there will also be exhibitions there uh, by Henry Fuseli, John Flaxman, Samuel Palmer, and others. They won't have their own exhibitions. They'll just be part of this one. Um, and apparently the artwork can't be on long-term display because it's quite fragile. So uh, it will only be running until the 19th of May, and it's called William Blake's Universe. So if you do happen to be around Cambridge, why not pop in and have a look? Uh, there's a picture here of an old man on a horse. The horse looks terrified. The old man looks crazy. He's wearing a crown. Um, and, oh, there's a picture here of two old people um, I actually thought for a minute that these were paintings by William Blake, but it's actually the curators, the people who organized it, 
uh, they're both um, talking uh, in the news about this uh, art exhibition as well. Speaking of museums, I see that the um, Victoria and Albert Museum in London uh, is going to employ a Taylor Swift superfan to become its official advisor about the star. The museum wants a British Taylor Swift fan who can give their expert insights into fan culture and the memorabilia that her devotees collect and create. Uh, the museum apparently has said that it's really interested in signs and friendship bracelets. You would think that a museum like the Victoria and Albert would have more things to do than think about Taylor Swift music, but it just goes to show again that uh, the old classical, well-educated Britain has gone. Museums are finding it very hard to survive, even though they're funded, I think, by the government because they all have free entry. So they're obviously trying to reach younger audiences. It's the same with opera and ballet. These things now are very, very sidelined and specialized. And um, in many ways, I blame them. I blame the museum and these uh, industries uh, like uh, ballet because they haven't opened up. They're not transparent. It's, it's very hard to even find information about how they operate or what they do. They just didn't change with the times. So as a result, they're finding it very hard to survive. Well, the Victoria and Albert Museum says um, it's looking for this uh, um, super fan um, so that uh, they can understand more about her before the 34-year-old U.S. pop star begins the European leg of her era's tour later this year. The leg of a tour just means part of a tour. Uh, that's how we talk about People who travel around the world, they have legs in different parts as they reach them. So the leg of her tour uh, is um, coming up later this year. Uh, it says here that the museum director has said that these new advisory roles, such as uh, a big fan of Taylor Swift being employed will help everyone to celebrate and discover more about the enormous and surprising creative diversity. Um, it seems very strange to me. I still haven't heard Taylor Swift's songs, uh, so I don't know what she's like. Um, as it says here, these new advisory roles, it implies that there's more than one. There's one for Taylor Swift fans, so that, that's going to take up one space. So they're employing a Taylor Swift fan. And then uh, they're also employing someone uh, who's expert on Lego. Another one for Pokemon cards uh, and someone else uh, on Toby jugs. A Toby jug is a particular type of jug that you can see in the UK. Um, and Gorp Core Clothing, I've no idea what that is. So they're obviously branching out. Uh, they're obviously looking at new ways to attract young people. So there we are. That's, um, that's the news today uh, um, about William Blake also the Victoria and Albert Museum. So today's phrase has been to shed light on. So this museum will be employing someone to shed light on the merchandise of Taylor Swift and uh, also um, a new uh, 
exhibition about William Blake taking place in Cambridge will shed some light on him and his paintings, which are very, well, incredibly enigmatic. And there we are. That's it from me today. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, whatever you're doing today, I hope that you find time to shed some light uh, on your English and some uh, new grammar and some words. Take care. See you. Bye.